And like I said, we're going to take our notes a little bit differently. You have two sheets of paper that looks like this. This one, just like this in front of you. The other sheet says learned and then it says proximate. Put that right behind this sheet. So you have your two sheets like this. Then you'll just fold it hamburger style because now you'll have like a little animal behavior book. Huh? I said learn. Come on, pay attention. So we have our animal behavior one in the front like this. Right behind it is learn and proximate. It goes right behind it. Everyone see? Yeah. Look up here if you don't see. Come on, guys. Now, we shouldn't take that long to do this. As soon as we put this behind this, then we just fold down hamburger style. So now, when you open up your booklet, your front will be animal behavior. You can decorate it nice and colorfully as we go along. You open up the first page. It says an animal interaction with its environment. Proximate. Open up again. You'll see ultimate. Flip over. You'll see learned. And then you say behavior evolves because. Everyone got that? Yeah. Okay. As we go through, I'll be populating it on the screen. I'll be calling you up for volunteers. We'll be watching some videos. We'll be drawing. Most of our notes will be drawings. Mm -hmm. it will not, and, and putting some bubble words. So like a comic book type notes. Not a lot of words will be going in on the paper. Any questions? All right. So again, in talking about animal behavior, animal, be, animal behavior is what? I have put color pencils at the table. You can't give me the word behave. The way animal reacts. Just react? How they live. How they adapt to their uh Okay, you said adapt, react. Um attract. How they evolve. How can we sum that up in one word? I mean, not sum up the whole sentence. How animals survive. How about interact? That's okay. So when you open up your, your um, book, it says, an animal's interaction with its, with its environment. That is animal behavior. Now, right now, this is the most writing that we're going to do. Everything else is going to be drawings. But we do need to create kind of like a little bubble map to understand animal behavior and what we're going to be talking about. So in the middle, you have this entire page. So utilize your space, but don't make it too big. But in the middle, we're going to put animal behavior. What'd you say? Now it includes several things. That's extra talking. One other thing it includes is, first of all, how do you behave? Because you are an animal. Seven. What, what does your behavior include? Tell me the ways that you behave. Or why. What are some reasons why you behave the way you behave? Because of your environment. Huh? But you have to be a little bit more specific. What happens in your environment? Roger, your first chance. You said something. Huh? For instance, your emotions. If you observe a situation, it will di dictate how you behave. If you walk into an area and everything's quiet, like for instance, let's say you walk into church and everyone's praying. You're not going to walk in like, yo, it's lit. Drink a mic. Drink a mic. <laughs> How else are some ways that you may be? Think about it this way. When you go home after school, what do you do? Do you do that every day? Yes. Okay, then when, you, when you go home you eat, you do that every day? Yes. Okay, yes. So this is considered to be what? Routine. Which is a habit. Habit. So animal behavior also includes habits. When you think about animal behavior, think about what it is that you do. That's going to help you. You have to make it personal for yourself.
Ladies, even gents, but I can speak more for the ladies. Let's say you're in a relationship and you text your boo and he don't text you back. And it's like four o'clock on a Saturday. Jump to conclusions. You jump into conclusions. Why? You said you're a female. You suspect stuff. You suspect stuff. <laughs> your hormones, but you start to think something may be wrong, right? And then you act on this thought, correct? Gentlemen, you go to the mall. You see your bae in the store standing next to another dude. No, my girl got to eat. He don't like girls. What do you want to do? My girl don't cheat, so he can do much not like girls. to instincts. Now, then you get over there and you realize that's her brother. <laughs> and now you feel stupid. Ladies, you get over there, you, you, te you text your boo, he don't answer. You drive all the way over to his house with your gang, 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 gang. And you get over there and you realize there's a death in the family. Wait, 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 wait. All right, so your instincts, they can be innate. What does innate mean? Innate, I-N-A-T-E. What does that mean? Correct. We'll talk about it in a little bit. Or they can be inherited. Or they can be um, oh, sorry. Did I say you made N A I N N. Oh. Make, come on, use your context clues. That wouldn't even make sense. Sorry. Yes. Does N A mean something that you just pick up? Possibly. We also behave, our behavior includes insight. Give me an example of your behavior based on your insight. Ooh. Roger. So, okay, back to the boo thing. Like, if you're, you, you find out some information, right, and then you ask them about it, and you start to lie, but you say that, like, I already know what, what really happened, so don't lie to me. So your insight is actually based on new information. And we do that, ladies. We like ask questions. Gentlemen, come on, you need to listen up. We ask questions. Don't lie because we're asking them because we already know the answer. Yep. Well, not, not necessarily. No. Yes. Yeah, uh, Tavarte, you lie all the time. Yeah. So. <laughs> all right. Another. Another behavior also includes. I want to make sure I can put it in spaces where we have space. Something called imprinting. We'll talk about imprinting in a moment. And looking more at animal behavior, we're going to write down one more thing that it includes, and then we're going to move on to another portion of the animal behavior. It includes something called associative learning. That's a big word. What do we think that means? What word can we see in associative? Associate. associate. What does that mean? Huh? No, it's um, associate meaning. 
Associate, well, associate means who you interact with, but what does associate mean? Talk to somebody, like somebody you can, um, somebody you, um, like you, you like interact, interact with people, like if, if they see that so person. So relate, you associate, relate, it's a relation, but not a relationship, it's a relation to. All right, so associative learning, um, let's put this, for instance. I'm going to write a little bit smaller. Is this a little bit like one side? You could have turned it one way, write a little smaller. Um, try to add it in, please. So we're going to do like three more things. We're going to do um, something here, here, and here in just a moment. But that, those aren't going to have as many branches as this one does. Um, so associative learning... Um, would be something called, well, for instance, would be something called classical condition, conditioning. And we're going to look at that. And we have something called trial and error. How many of you behave based on trial and error? You try it, it didn't work, you're like, I'm not doing that again. You try it, it worked, you're like, great, I'm going to try that again until it doesn't work. What do you think this can result in in the wild? Death. I was going to say that. Yes. What is death in the wild? If, if organisms continuously die and they all die off, what can this be? Extinction. Extinction. All right, in order to behave, so our behavior includes, or animal behavior includes all of these things. But going a little bit more deeper, what else does our behavior also include? Or how do we behave? How can we interact with one another? How do we interact with one another? Huh? Talking. Talking, which is called? Communication. Communication. So animal behavior has communication. Yes. Now we communicate by talking, texting, writing. Um, we communicate other other uh, ways which we'll put on here as well. So communication can be visual. Jadison, come on now. Visual. So we can communicate by looking. If, if, if I'm standing up here, or we, you know, when you learned this from uh, middle school and elementary school, this is a visual communication. Um, auditory. What does that mean? Speaking. Sound. We communicate through sound. There is also chemical communication. Yes, the animals use something called pheromones. It's P-H-E-R-A-M-O-N-E-S. And actually, I did spell that wrong. It's P-H-E-R-O. P-H-E-R-O-M-O-N-E-S. Pheromones. With that, some of this looks like it kind of ties in. We look at why we communicate. We communicate the reason why we communicate include all of these instincts, associative learning, observational learning, habits, imprinting. We look at how we communicate, um, or how we behave, I'm sorry, not communicate, how we behave. We communicate through auditory, visual, chemical, um, using pheromones. We also communicate through social behavior. And here, this isn't to say social behavior like our communication, 
where we use sound, vision, and chemicals. Social behavior is more so in a social environment around other species or other animals outside of your actual species. So looking at how fish behave in a social environment around other fish or other species of animals. How many more things do you have to draw? We're going to put one small one here with a little branch, but we're only connecting this to two things. So I'm going to connect it up here so I can have space right here. So, gentlemen, you go to a party, Christmas um, little get together with your boo, or you y'all don't go together, but you meet up here. You see your boo immediately. What you gonna do? Right over here, baby. Right? What is that? It's not a greeting. Why? Because when you when you when when you're in class or you're already at on a date already, you go to the movies together or not even on the movies. You're visiting each other's house. You're sitting on the porch. Everything's all good. But when you go to a social gathering where there's other males or females, so you're you're doing what? You're claiming your territory. So social behavior is territorial. You put your hat on her head, you want her to wear your necklace, you want to wear a name tag, and this is my girl. You wear a shirt, they say, I'm with him, I'm with her. We didn't do that in the 50s. You're saying we, so you were born in the 50s? No. I'm saying we, meaning as in this was done in my generation of time that was well further above the 50s. My husband, who is my husband now, we would go out. And we'll be out here for the time. I'm like, you messed my hair up. Like, I don't need to. But what happens during marriage? Put a ring on it. That's territorial. Yeah, so now, when I'm not around him, it's already a fact that no need to talk to her because she's already somebody's boo. All right, and same thing, vice versa. No need to talk to him because he already has a boo. But that's why you wear your shirts. I'm with her, and she wears I'm with stupid. All right, let's pay attention. Guys up here. All right, another um, social behavior is sometimes we behave in a manner that's for the good of all, and this is called altruistic. And a lot of us teachers behave this way. I sacrifice my sleep and my fun for the good of all, and that's altruistic behavior. And then this is our last one that we're going to put over here, and I'm going to do it in green. Oh, wow. All right, so animal behavior has to obviously include what else? What do you think we're missing? Oh, I can't see that. So I'm going to do it in um, brown. Brown is good? Yes. What else do you think animal behavior includes? We talked about communicate, why we behave, communicate, how we do it in social environments. But we're missing something. Dang, I can't see the brown either. So I'll do it in blue. What are we missing? It was it was not as dark. There we go. What are we missing about behavior? Talk it over with your group for a second and see what could we possibly be missing. How did you get to that party? How do you act in that party? What do you do at that party? You walk, okay. What do you do at the party? You move. You move. Oh my God. So, doesn't animal behavior include movement? And there's three types of movements, and this is what we're going to end off with. One is kinesis. The 
The other one is taxes. And the last one is migration. So these are three types. So far so good? All right, so like I said, that's the most writing that we're going to do. Everything else is going to be with drawings and pictures and just a little bit of words, but not a lot of words. Yes, question. Texas with an I. All right. Talk over with your partner about ways that you could fit Ways that you could fit within each of these categories. Talk over now, one and a half minute, how you fit in each of these categories. We got <laughs> No, no, I don't want to know what you have, because I don't want to know what you do that fits into one of these. What you do that fits into one of the purple. What you do that fits into one of the pink and one of the movement. Let me stop you so I can get a little bit more organized. Pick, hey, pick one partner. There's four categories. One partner talks about two colors of how you, what you do that fits in those two. The other partner talks about what you do that fits in the other two. Brown and pink or brown and purple, go. Thirty seconds. All right, flip your papers over, or you should already be on the bottom portion. Proximate. Add the word how. This is how behaviors occur. Proximate, again, is how behaviors occur. I have, yes. I don't be listening. All right, so you have chemical signals and you have symbolic signals already listed there for you. I'm going to show this short video. While you're watching the video, we're going to discuss it, but I want you to think of what about ways that you could draw um, how this how chemical signals could be illustrated. All right, without talking, Troy or anybody else. Hey, so we've all seen ants. Uh, here's a picture of one somewhere on the screen. It doesn't look like much, right? Alone, a single ant might not feel like something In to the write home about. Most times, she'll be pretty small, and she'll be ashamed. Underneath the white basket. Uh, she'll also be fairly vulnerable and non-threatening. But here's the thing. Ants are social insects, and in large numbers, they can be a lot of trouble. Ants' abilities differ widely from one species to the next, and there are more than 12,000 known species. Again, that's just the ones we know about. They outnumber us a million to one, coordinating massive operations to provide food, shelter, and defense to their colony. As any myrmecologist will tell you, that's the uh, fancy name for ant experts, chief among an ant's superpowers is its ability to communicate. Ants primarily communicate through the release of chemicals called pheromones. Generally, the glands responsible for these pheromones are located in the head, thorax, gaster, and legs. They're usually released from the mandibles, the gaster, and the cuticle. That's the hard outer layer of an ant's body. Ants detect these pheromones using their antenna, and truth be told, they're pretty good at it. So let's say you're at a picnic. You're unwrapping, uh, I don't know, a sandwich or whatever, uh, a roast beef panini, and you see one lone ant. That is a scout that's going to return with a massive wave of coordinated tiny fiends on a mad quest to get your roast beef panini by any means necessary. But here's how the scout tips the rest of her crew to the potential heist. As she's foraging, she's laying down pheromones, kind of like how Hansel and Gretel laid down breadcrumbs in that fairy tale, which was, the name of that one? Hansel and Gretel were in it. 
All right, well, when and if she does find a large source of food, she hightails back to the ant headquarters, releasing more of the pheromone along the way, creating a trail that other ants in her colony can follow. And the better the food source, the stronger this trail. As other foragers arrive to assist, they also lay down pheromones and reinforce the trail. And, like everything with ants, the way they treat these trails really depends on their species. Some species of ants will only follow their own chemical trails, while others will follow anyone. They'll pick up on pheromones from other ant species. Ants also communicate by touching each other's cuticles and deriving information about each other from hydrocarbons they find there. The different types of particular hydrocarbons, and there are a lot, each have their own odor, indicating numerous things about the individual ant, from its home colony to the task it's assigned, like foraging. Ants also communicate through movement, like vibrant. All right. What are some, talk with your group really quickly about some ways that you could actually, uh-oh, didn't mean to do that. Some ways we could illustrate, gosh, some ways we could actually illustrate how chemical signals would be a proximate behavior, how animals behave. Go ahead and talk with your group. I want you to talk with your group about how we can illustrate this. And then start illustrating it. All right, can I get a volunteer? Chappie, come on up and tell us how you were going to draw it. Oh, you don't want to draw it. You want me to draw it. Bestie, come on. Well, how are we drawing? I could do it. Why you guys don't want to do it? All right, so this would be considered chemical signals. I'm only writing it here because I'm going to replace this picture up. All right, so chemical signals, how can we illustrate this? <laughs> Roger. Well, I said like we could draw like food in one place. Okay, food. What's the food? Cheese. Cheese. It's hard to see cheese. Can we draw something else? French fries. Pizza, pizza. A chill. Pizza, pizza. Taco. 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 What's the black stuff inside of watermelon? It's seeds. Can I? Oh. I don't know. All right. So we got watermelon. Now what? Then you draw the ant like far away. Yeah, right. Far away from it? Because it, doesn't it use like chemical signals? Yeah, you do. Okay, pay attention, Troy. But before we draw it far away, what does the ant have to do? Oh, go to it first. The ant has to go to it. This is our ant. Here's our ant. How can we illustrate our ant actually doing something? How can we illustrate an ant? Huh? Bubble, good. Okay. 
What is our aunt saying? Okay, it could be saying that, but we need to illustrate this chemical signal. Okay? Fam got to eat. Fam got to eat. So then what? Three little circles. Fam got to eat, then what? But he's not going to go get him yet, though. Pheromone. I'll leave what? A scent. I'll leave a scent. So then, maybe an after. We got the watermelon. And again, you don't have to draw this uh, illustration like me. If you figure out another way to do it, by all means, do it your way. A little piece. The ants go marching one by one, hurrah, hurrah. The ants go marching one by one, hurrah, hurrah. The ants go marching one by one, the little one stops to eat the watermelon because it will left the pheromone scent there so it knows exactly where the watermelon is at. <laughs> and they all go marching down to the round to get out of the rain. Boom, boom. All righty. So, with that being said, our next proximate behavior is symbolic signals. So, we're going to just take a look at Phineas and Fur for a minute, because they do a good job at these symbolic... No, it's a waggle dance. Well, I don't think I can really overstate. But being communication is quite complicated. Simple figure eight is packed with many wonderful signs. Yeah, but also tells the bees the distance. Everybody do the waggle dance. Come on, waggle. Waggle. It's called the, the, the honey bee twerk. It's the honey bee twerk. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, then stop. Let me see everybody stand up. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, then stop. Y'all not gonna do it? Y'all corny. So, what happens with a. I'm gonna tell you right now um, because we're gonna watch another short video about what that actually was. Uh -oh. I know, but I'm trying to get it. There we go. Pay attention. In the wild, they're sometimes nest out of the open, but mankind has persuaded them to live and store their honey in hives. She is just a little bigger than her subjects and mother of them all. In spring, when food stocks are low, the workers. They have a remarkable method of telling one another where to find the most productive flowers. Here it goes. The Draco. It's called the Waggle Dance. 
Both of y'all stop. Turning bee, they just found a new source in the hive of mountains. So this is what it's all about. Just going back to First, she gathers an audience. To do that, she climbs on her sister's backs and vibrates her abdomen. Hey guys, look at me, look at me. I got All righty, are we good with this? So again, I just drew a bee with some little signals like gyro vibrating little movement. Um, gestures, I'm, we don't have time for that right now. These, this would be a gesture, but sometimes there are certain, some of our gestures that we would use is you walk by. That's, that's what's up. And that's a symbolic signal for head. Sometimes you leave the room and you might throw up the deuces. Uh, a lot of ladies, we now do boy bye. And this is maybe a, it used to be, talk to the hand. I'm sure you get a lot of time, boy bye. A lot of times, you, uh, back, in, back in the day, you might just throw up the hand. Like, ooh, talk to the hand. We done um, 16, 26. All right, you good? You took me. Are we good here? Yeah. All right, so then let's talk about the ultimate behavior. Ultimate behavior is the why the behavior is happening. We talked about how. Tell me again how we behave or how animals behave. Chemical signals. What else? Symbolic signals. These how we behave is called what type of behavior? Why? Nope. The how we behave is called what? Proximate. proximate. Look at your notes. It's called the proximate behavior. The ultimate behavior, meaning the ultimate reason why we behave. Huh? It's, um, they put it around there somewhere. Somebody has, who has the stapler for Madison? Um, Hernandez, what's up? Yes. One of the reasons why we behave is that innate reason. What does innate mean? I think if it's not like a word, it's, it's like something that you, it's like something that you like adapt to or like catch on. What's the root word there? Innate. Innate. In, meaning that it's where? It's within. it's within you, meaning that you must have been born with it. Born with it. Um, innate means born with <laughs> This is a natural instinct. Meaning, no one had to teach this to you. It's automatically what was there. All right, so we're going to take a look at a little short video about innate behavior. And we're going to document it on here. Let's stop talking, guys. Come on, screen. Come on, screen. Behavior can be described as a reaction to a stimulus. 
which is an internal or external event that leads to the response. Many forms of behavior are essential to an organism's survival. Examples of behaviors range from hunting skills, to avoiding predators, to migrating back in the winter, to mating rituals. In this case, behaviors, which are often called inherited or behaviors. They can be varied to the stimulus. Let's look at the mate behaviors as well as some examples as we follow Craig through his day. First, we will look at the most simple forms of a mate behavior, reflux, passive, and kinesis. Today, Craig has a doctor's appointment. 